Hello everyone. From today onwards, we are going to practice controlling scenarios and the controlling end-to-end -end process and end-to-end -end functionality starting from basic settings to the profit center accounting. So actually I have set up all the configuration which are mainly required for FI setup before we move on to controlling. So actually I have created a company code and uh, the part the part of configuration which is required like chart of accounts uh, I think it's uh, my company code which I have created um, mm, let me check I forgot the name so it is like M Yeah, this one MCRS. So I have created this company code and I have already configured the initial setup which is required like chart of accounts and um, the fiscal year variant and I have created the field status variant, posting period variant and I have even um, updated the number ranges so whatever the basic configuration in FI I have set for this company code actually I have taken a video on this but uh, I don't know there was some uh, recording voice missing in that video so I was not loading actually I loaded it but it was not uh, that much of quality so again I don't want to waste time in recording that video which is already an FI configuration part so to just to let we all know that I have already created a company code with FI configuration and from now on I am going to show you the uh, steps which uh, which we are moving forward with controlling configuration so let us start and see how the controlling configuration steps looks like and what is the importance of this controlling configuration. So now let's move on and understand the purpose of controlling area. So normally we should create controlling area if we need to take any um, if we need to do any transactions in controlling like control we all know that controlling is used for internal purpose and for internal reporting so this is mainly used for the management to take appropriate decisions like um, uh, whether it is good to manufacture the project uh, product inside the company or it is better to get the product outside and how are the expenses uh, they are incurring on each particular department so there are many things which helps uh, which this controlling helps the internal management to understand about the costs and profits of the organization so for that purpose we definitely need the controlling area so for that purpose we are going to create SPRO IMG controlling in general controlling and in organization maintain controlling area so the first step we are going to create is maintain controlling area so we can see all the existing controlling areas and the first step is we are going to view the controlling area there are two things you can see here if it is controlling area equal to company code so it will take the data automatically sorry not ABCS our company code is um, 
MCRS. So you, you can see like it automatically fills up the information exists within the company code. The same chart of account, the same fiscal year variant and the currency type, currency and whatever it might be. But if we are going to create the controlling area, with our own choice like uh, uh, it, the chart of account should be same it should be similar to the controlling area and fiscal year variant it can it should be same but uh, it should if it is a calendar year the start and end date of the end dates in that fiscal year variant should be same the name can might be different So, we let us not uh, copy the data from the company code. Let us create our own data and let us see how it works. So, let us click on new entries and controlling area. We will give the same name, but we don't copy the data from the company code. So, we will tell that um, controlling area for MCRS and here this is the main thing which we need to understand controlling area same as company code or cross company code cost accounting. So, if we are if the first thing the main difference which we need to understand between these two options are controlling area same as company code is like just we will assign a single company code to this controlling area cross company code cost accounting is we will we are going to assign multiple company codes even though we are going to assign multiple company codes or a single company code the chart of account should be the same it should be similar chart of accounts when compared all the company code should uh, be assigned to the similar chart of accounts then only it is possible to assign to the controlling area and fiscal year variant as I said the start and end dates should be similar even the naming name of the fiscal year variant changes the starting and ending dates of the fiscal year variant should match then only it is allowed to update a different fiscal year variant in controlling area so the main purpose here is if we want to use this if we want to assign a single company code we can use con cost controlling area same as company code if we are going to assign multiple company codes to this controlling area and the rule is like again it should have the same chart of accounts then we can use the cross company code cost accounting so still let us explore more on these two options let us understand in detail how this option works and how if we have multiple company codes how does it work let us understand in detail about this controlling area okay so as i said before we have multiple company codes and we need to assign it to a single controlling area all these multiple company codes should have the same chart of accounts so if all company codes are using the same chart of accounts then only it is possible to assign then only cross company controlling is possible if company codes are using separate chart of accounts it is not possible to assign the same controlling area we can have individual controlling areas so this is the main point which we need to remember if we need to assign the company code to the controlling area it should have the same chart of accounts okay to understand in detail 
let us understand we have four company codes so if we want to assign all these four company codes to the controlling to a single controlling area all these four company codes should have the same operating chart of accounts if not even though they have the same chart of accounts we have a possibility that we can assign it to the individual controlling areas it is not mandatory that if it has the same chart of accounts it should be assigned to the same controlling area no we don't have that obligation it is like it is the customer interest whether if he needs to assign a single controlling area to the single company code so even then he can assign to the sing, uh, individual controlling areas for individual company codes so there is again when we can use this cross cross cost accounting controlling area that is when so if we have four company codes two company codes do uh, manufacture the same kind of uh, mobiles and two other company codes uh, uh, manufactures laptops so then it is the same company but two company codes in different regions is manufacturing uh, mobiles and two other different company codes is manufacturing laptops so so as i said two company codes are manufacturing mobiles and two other company codes are manufacturing laptops but these both company codes are utilizing the same office premises and same manufacturing units and two other company codes are in the same way are utilizing the same office and same manufacturing units for mobiles it has different and for laptops it has different but it is the both two company codes are sharing the same things so we have one profit center for mobiles and another profit center for laptops but still we have two company codes under each under each area so if we want to know the reporting under profit center and there are multiple company codes we need to generate the reports under these two company codes and as the expenses are shared between these company codes we will accumulate the costs to the common cost center and share these costs between the cost centers at the month end or allocate these costs to the cost centers at the month end so for all these kind of sharing kind of expenses we can use this cross company code cost accounting so i think we now have a better idea what actually the cross company code cost accounting is so now let us move on to the configuration part so controlling area same as company code cross company code cost accounting as we are going to use only a single company code we can take this or uh, if you have a plan of adding more company codes with the similar chart of accounts we can even choose this option so now if we choose this option you can see that we can get only company code currency option only a single option the same thing whatever we did before the same thing happens like if it is controlling area same as company code whatever we did the automatically the same values get updated 
even though you, if, if we select controlling area same as company code this is same thing this and this options are same so we can see the values um, automatically copied from the company code we can see that chart of accounts fiscal year variant and currency is automatically populated from the company code and now we are going to give the cost center standard hierarchy so which we name it as mcrs and when we click on enter it shows that does not exist and do you want to create it we will say s yes. so in the background it will create that cost center standard hierarchy why it is useful is like uh, we have different uh, cost and cost centers from different departments so in order to group those cost centers in a hierarchy it will be in the top level the standard hierarchy will ad, will be at the top level and administrative under administrative again we can, we can have some cost centers and manufacturing and hr department if according to the departments there will be centers assigned so now we click on save and we can see this configuration is saved in this particular transport So once this configuration gets saved, we will assign the company code to the controlling area and activate the components whichever required. Like we have many components like uh, cost center, internal order. And activity based costing, sales order, integration, if we want even real estate management integration, there are many components which we can active. So now moving on, we will assign the company codes. We'll just click on new entries and here we can give MCRS and now we can see that we have assigned a company code and now we try to activate the components so now we try to activate the components we will click on new entries and we can see there are different components we can give Now the year is 2022 and we can select the same year and we can select the cost center component is active. So there are different options. See we can see we can activate whatever the components required for our com company we can activate whether we need to activate order management, commitment management, activity based costing but even we can see this profitability analysis is not is grayed out and so once we assign these or activate these components even in at any point of time we can activate this project sales order cost objects or real estate management but it is recommended to activate this order management commitment management and activity based costing at the starting of the year so it will not mess up with the entries when we add it at the middle of the year so in order to do that if 
if our company is planning to activate these components from next year so let us first activate this for this just cost center accounting for the current year and from next year onwards we can activate the other components so so once it's it's get saved i will show you how we can activate the internal orders component or other components from next year so just once we saved it we can see that this cost center component is activated till double line double line so now once if we want to have a next entry and if we see here we can once we click on next entry and if we give 2023 as a new year and we can activate cost uh, component active and even order management active so it will be active is from 2023 onwards both cost center and order management will be active so we can save this so once we save this we can see like cost center will be active for 2022 year and from 2023 onwards internal order and both cost center accounting and internal order will be active so once it gets saved we will go and see how it is updated in the configuration table so now let us see like if we click on this and this was already saved so let us save this and once we come back to this assignments of company codes and uh, and again when we click on this activate components we can see a table kind of structure where we can see so if we click on this see we can see because we actually we have selected one to one so we have assigned only one company code and if we click on this i think we need to see it as a table okay let us display okay we will exit from this and now we will try to click on as maintain controlling area and if we okay now we need to select our company code mcrs and if we select this and click on this we can see in the table format so 2022 and 2023 so if we want to see the table view as i said like we need to exit and again log in to the maintain controlling area position the company code and click on we can see we can select this and click on details so we can see the fiscal year now is just updated to 2022 it's the component is just cost center is active and if we
go back and if we want to see it again I think again we need to come out of it and select this and click on details we can see pass enter and order management is active so until we specify the other year we can see here it is double line double line with till which it is active so so we can activate the other indicators this indicators project sales other this can be even activate can be activated at the middle of the year but these main components it is recommended to activate at the beginning of the year so now let us move on with our configuration so in order to avoid the confusion let us uh, delete this entry like 2023 which we activated for internal order component otherwise uh, whenever we have the post whenever we do the postings it will be asking which for which controlling area we need to post the entries so just i have deleted and if we see now we will have just only a single entry with 2022 and now we go back and yeah we will save the changes and now we will give the number ranges for our controlling area so even we have some changes related to number ranges so that changes we can figure out when we do the postings so now as of now what we do is we will copy the number ranges mean from 0001 so copy 0001 and to our company code mc rs so we will copy this okay now let us see the intervals which was copied we can see there were many intervals which were copied so as we all know that we have many places where we use this cost center like while posting to the assets or while posting mainly to the expenses like rent pay rent payment administrative expenses wherever wherever we are doing the transaction related to expenses we are going to use this controlling area and for profit center accounting we will wherever we have revenues we will be using those profit center cost object so so these number ranges are classified based on that and we will see so we have seen that we have created the number ranges so what is the purpose of number ranges to differentiate between the business transactions even in fi we have different number ranges which we assigned to the document type so if we have an vendor invoice the number range will be different for vendor payment number range will be different or uh, that depends on the customer choice whether they want different number ranges or whether they want the same number ranges they can create according to their choice in the same way in controlling uh in controlling we have different business transactions based on business transactions the number range is assigned so we have seen that 
um, we have copied the number ranges from triple zero one and these are the number ranges if we see here these are the number ranges if we see the overview of this how this number ranges are differentiated between business transactions we can see that for primary postings the number range we see here is starts with series 1 and this is for primary postings and the number range is 0 1 primary postings CON and Kazo is the primary postings and these postings will be posted to the posted to these number ranges and number number range 0 2 and these kind of postings like uh, payment plan settlement payment scheduling all these kind of business transactions will be posted to two series and if we see little bit below and we can find three series assessment distribution order settlement all these kind of business transactions will be posted in posted with the series which starts with three so like that this is the purpose of number range to differentiate between the business transactions by just watching the transaction or by just having a look at the transaction we can say that okay this might be this kind of transaction so that is how activity based costing primary postings there are different here we need to discuss one of the main point uh, which was newly introduced in SAP S4 HANA which doesn't exist in uh, SAP ECC we in our FI uh, in our previous videos related to FI I think we discussed a, a document type uh, called CO so I think uh, even we discussed that this document type CO is used only for CO internal postings so if they have some uh, settlements distributions within the CO which doesn't flow to FI at the time this document CO will be triggered and even in addition to that so and in addition to that this business transactions will be updated in that transaction which helps in classifying what kind of business transaction it is even though it is a controlling document within the CO so what kind of business transaction uh, is this like uh, what kind of business transaction is the one which posted which got posted and so we can differentiate the kind of business transaction so when we post a document we can see that how the document type gets updated with CO in ECC we don't have that particular document type uh, it works totally a little bit different because the secondary cost element uh, is not directly it was uh, secondary cost element was uh, not linked to the general ledger uh, account and we were posting the internal controlling postings through these business transactions but as now the cost element secondary cost element is created with the is linked with the general ledger account so even now even for that for that reason we have a document type which is used uh, which is used in the internal postings within the CO so the document type is CO and within that we can even see this business transactions uh, if this this mainly is for CO through postings from FI from FI to CO this one but we have in distribution and assessment and settlement uh, trans business transaction those will get updated with the relevant business transaction codes
we will see all these things in our postings so now moving on to versions maintain versions so we will have why do we need versions in controlling actually we have plan version and actual version so what is the purpose of controlling we will have it is useful for internal reporting purpose so to produce a product or to spend some uh, expenses to a particular activity this is the amount we are going to plan so we will compare it with the actual expenses which actually we are going to incur so we will be able to know where the variance which we planned went wrong or where where the difference which we planned went correct so we can compare that difference between plan and actual in controlling this is this is what helpful for internal reporting so for each and every activity or for particular activity to happen everyone might have like ceo might have his own uh, plan of amount and the accountant will have his own his based on the calculations he will have his own plan of amount so once this activity gets started and once the accounting transactions are posted to the system then system will compare between the plan and actual and find the variance and we can see which plan is better or how we can improve further for other activities something there are very there are many decisions which we take based on this plan and actual versions so this version g0 is um mainly exists in even sap ecc and also in sap s4 hana version 0 is the one provided by sap all other versions was developed by the company or the customers okay so whenever we whenever the transactions are getting posted in fi and transfer to co so as we are discussing whenever the version 0 we use for both plan and actual so once the transactions gets posted from fi to co it will post under actual under version 0 so the postings from fi to co will happen only in this version 0 under actual section so all other things are different this this and all not uh, in co these are all from different uh, components so the main thing is like plan versions can be many but actual version will only be version 0 which we will compare against and find which plan works worked better okay so this is the purpose of version and even we have define ledger for co version so define ledger for co version it will be like define ledger we know in f5 we have ledgers leading and non leading ledgers so why normally we use ledgers is like to differentiate the transaction between accounting principles so company has to follow many different standards in that it has to follow if india gap ifrs and whatever it might be so for each and every 
mandatory accounting principles it has to post the transactions in that particular ledger so for india gap we are going to create it as in india gap and for ifrs we are going to define the ledger as ifrs so in co we have versions in co we have versions like 0 1 2 3 so in if we see in sap ecc version this leading ledger leading ledger is 0l right so always the values in always the value so we have leading ledger 0l so always the values in leading ledger 0l will be posted to version 0 this is by default in sap ecc this is by default the values will flow from leading ledger to the version 0 but in sap s4 hana we have an configuration we have a configuration to define which ledger value should flow to which version so let us try to create new entries so our controlling area is mcrs this is our controlling area and for version 0 the value should flow from 0 l so we can specify which which ledger value should flow to version 0 if we want other ledger even we can specify the different ledger to post the values to the to version 0 so this is a combination which version value which version which ledger from from fi which ledger should post values to which version in the co so now let us just uh, remove this and uh, while doing the postings let us see what kind of error we get because of this mandatory configuration which is going to miss so we just delete it and continue and save it so let us see we are going to delete this and when we do the postings let us see what kind of error message we are going to get because of this missing configuration okay now we go back and see this in maintain versions um what are the other things we need to configure like uh, settings in operating concern settings for profit center accounting we will see it later and controlling any settings for each fiscal year okay so settings for each fiscal year let us see for version 0 we will see the our controlling area is mcrs version 0 and we can see here settings for each fiscal year how we can make the settings for each fiscal year in fiscal year 2022 whether we need to lock this version 
because of uh, because this is a plan or actual version whether we need to block uh, this copying allowed whether it is allowed to copy to the next year whether this version is allowed to copy or not integrated planning which is recently added in SAP S4 HANA this integrated planning means planning from which we can get from outside there are many tools where we can integrate uh, our planning so version locked if we want to lock this version for any of the reasons we can come here and lock this version so these are the few settings I think that's it and here um, settings for each fiscal year so these are the few settings we can see in this configuration we were not able to select the COPA profitability analysis whether it is a costing based or account based so as we are going to have our business postings with profit centers it is required to activate this component so but it is grayed out so in order to get it highlighted we need to go to controlling and activate the profit center accounting accounting basic settings controlling settings so we can do so this year it was not activated copa is not activated so that was not displayed over there in that configuration so we need to activate it and before activating that we need to give the standard hierarchy as MCRS and profit center local currency type so we will by default select this controlling area currency okay and uh, here we can see the dummy profit center so the purpose of dummy profit center is whenever we are not sure of which profit center to get posted for this transaction we can use the dummy profit center for that particular transaction but this dummy profit center is not required in SAP S4 HANA because because let me save this and uh, because in through document splitting there is one configuration which we can find out in document splitting configuration which is known as constant so uh, as I, uh, as we discussed like um, in SAP ECC we have dummy profit center and in SAP S4 HANA there is no need of dummy profit center because in document splitting gen document is under the general ledger accounting right general ledger accounting business transactions document splitting and edit constant for non assigned processes so wherever the processes have non assigned values so we can assign the values assignment of profit centers by default if we see here we can assign the 
प्रॉफिट सेंटर ओके आई थिंक सो वी कैन सी इन दिस कॉन्फ़िगरेशन द कंट्रोलिंग एरिया इज असाइन टू द डिफॉल्ट प्रॉफिट सेंटर इफ वी वांट any of our business transactions which uh, which doesn't have the profit center needs to be defaulted to the uh, profit center which we assigned in this configuration we can set the configuration or we can update the configuration in this uh, place so if 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 we if by any chance if there are no profit centers in our business transactions by default it will pick up the profit center from this configuration so this is where so i think this fields are customized fields and in few systems i see only segment and partner is available segment and business area is available and here i can see few more fields are available i think it is like um, um, customized fields which user can add as per their choice so assignment of profit centers so this is the place where we will add the profit centers if it is unassigned like as it said non assigned process it constant it's like default so this is the place where the profit center will be picked up by default if it is not assigned we will stop with this video uh, as we see here so profit center and this and with this here uh, we have updated even the pca configuration and okay we have here legal valuation and ale distribution method here legal valuation group valuation profit center valuation so under which method this profit center accounting should be done will be uh, selected here ale distribution method is like no distribution to other systems centralized profit center accounting they have multiple systems so that they need it centralized or it should be local or it it, it doesn't want to distribute in to any other systems that configuration will be selected here so with this we are going to end this uh, basic settings uh, for controlling area uh, video and uh, we will meet in another video starting with master data and uh, how we are going to post the transactions so as i said like um, now check whether we will be able to activate profit center accounting uh, activate components okay we will we will check this in our next video and thank you thank you for watching this video